What's up guys, welcome back on the channel, welcome back on Thursday, 7th of December, the day before we play Napoli. Um, I already did put a step video preview out on Napoli, so check that out, the normal regular preview will be out tomorrow morning as usual on game day. Um, we have some daily news on Napoli or involving Napoli, which is quite funny, but the big news is Hoysen, uh, Hoysen basically, but I will say it Hoysen, who... Could be on the move in January. Uh, we have a Pogba update. We have, like I said, funny Napoli news uh, related to Juve. Rabiot as well. And um, some other stuff to go through. So before we do that, like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Hit the bell notification. And let's get straight into it. Okay, like I said. Napoli tomorrow. Preview. One out, the other will be out. So we're not really going to talk about this game. We're going to talk about Dean Hoysen because that's a big topic the last two days, uh, which kind of felt um, not possible or like what no, was in nobody's mind. I will, I will say that, not impossible. But rather, it was nobody's mind that, you know what, potentially Hoysen could be on the move in January or at the end of the season, however you want to see it. However, in the last couple of hours, days, whatever you want to call it, uh, his name is being mentioned with a move. It is being linked with a potential move. And the update is that initially, or like a couple of days ago, uh, weeks ago, if you want to say that, there was talks about potentially him leaving uh, in uh, the summer or whatever. And the news was, you know what, he doesn't want to leave. Because he wants to stay at the club, he wants to grow, and everybody knows that. However, things have changed now. Because Toniozzi, who worked for uh, the under-23s, who brought in Hoysen and all those things, went to Granada, and he wants to bring him in. I know Nikushira, Mirko Di Natale said, watch out for Frosinone, all those things. Granada is a big thing here. He also played in Spain, uh, Hoysen. He speaks fluently uh, Spanish, so I think that link is more serious than Frosinone, to be honest. Um, however, it is a big topic because the news is suggesting that they really want to bring him in and he's open to that idea because he wants to play and we cannot blame him. Like we cannot blame him. You know, we kind of involved him into the first team. He got 15 minutes against Milan away from home and then he, he, on the bench and back to the under 23s like he did yesterday. Um, I think if you're being so close and it's been really up in the air, I don't think you have any appetite to go back to the under 23s and uh, let's be completely honest you know I think he needs to play regular big boy football now if you want to see what he can be um and he's not playing regular big big, big boy football and even with the under 23s like he's training with the team this was his first game in, in a couple of weeks so he's not getting regular minutes like it's not really making sense for him one like at all you know, we can look at it and you're like, oh, grow, sit on the bench. He's not playing, not even for the under-23s. And that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing for him. And I think he's realizing it. And I think he's now very open to a move. Uh, it's a long move, you know, obviously. I don't think the club is going to want to sell him at all. Um, but like I said a couple of days ago, what is the project? You know, is it about making money? Is it about actually involving them? Because none of these players are being involved. Miretti played half of the... Not, not even half at this moment in time, of the minutes available because he's not playing for two games and he will not start tomorrow uh, most likely again. So he's not playing. Other than that, there's nobody left. Sule is a Frosinone. Barniche is a Frosinone. Huysen is not playing, potentially leaving. Yildiz is getting garbage time minutes. Junior is for sale. So what is the U project? Because they keep pushing it and saying, oh, we have a good crop of players and we need to build on that. That's a... Yes, this is the best crop of players you probably ever will because this is ridiculous compared to the last 20 years. And it doesn't feel like we're taking full advantage of it because we have a very, not stubborn coach, but we have a coach who has an idea, a mindset, and he's not backing down from it. He's winning, so you can potentially not say, oh, you're doing the wrong thing here in terms of result-wise because he's getting the results. However... The players are not being involved. So actually, at this point, I don't want to hear about we have a good crop of you players. Uh, this is a stepping stone. We can use them to build in and around. 
No, we're not doing it. We could, but we're not really doing that if we're being completely honest. We're playing Alexandro, who is out of his contract and who's gone next season. And he's taking minutes from players who are going to be here and potentially going to be here for a long time. On top of that, Sandro has been straight garbage for the last couple of seasons. You know, he has been. He's been really poor. That's happening at the club. Kostic is not good this season. Like, forget the set piece assist and whatever. He's not being good in games throughout 90 minutes. And he keeps playing him. And Junior is not getting a sniff at all. Like, he's not getting a peek into the team. At that point, you just need to be honest and say, what, what is the U project? Because it's not really a U project when we're allowing these players to leave, trying to cash in, and the players are willing to to actually leave and play. And then when you have players out on loan, like Asule, there are so many rumors from good sources, and even Juntili suggesting it's not 100% sure he's going to be back here next season. So what is the point? Only time will tell. But if I'm being honest, at this moment in time, it doesn't look as rosy as it has been per- portrayed in the last couple of months, year, year uh, to be honest. you know, And even, I think, long term, I just... I don't know. I don't have a good vibe with it. But that's what the Houston situation is all about. Now let's move on to probably the biggest news of the day. And it's Pogba. Uh, so the prosecutors asked for asked for a four-year suspension. I think that's that's a lot. <laughs> that seems a bit over the top. Unless we are missing or we are we don't have all the details and things have, I don't know, are worse than we potentially would have thought initially that could be the case uh anyway he would he's done uh for us you know if even if it was two years he's absolutely done i saw fabiana della valle talking about now they're gonna see how to terminate his contract i'm pretty sure the club can rip that apart if he's found guilty because you know what it's you <laughs> you cannot play we cannot pay you uh so i don't think that was it will be an issue um, but we knew that, you know, it's been very quiet around Paul, but even when the news broke today, I don't think everybody's making big fuss about it. He, he did what he did, what he did. It's not allowed. And it is what it is. Is it the worst transfer we ever made? Yes. <laughs> it's 100% is, uh, for the money and the output, no output, one assist against Sevilla, was it right? Or sporting at home for the Gatti assist. Uh, and other than that, it, it was a complete disaster, you know, and uh, it's done. We know that. I don't think it's there's time or any real point to dwell on it because it, it's not em- it's impacting us because we lost the player and the money. Uh, but in the big picture, like we've been playing without him for two years now, almost a year and a half. So it is what it is, I guess. It's four years. Let's see. No, they asked for four years. Let's see what it will be um, after he will probably appeal and all that uh, jazz. But I don't know. <laughs> like it is what it is. I'm. I, I'm. I have no uh, opinion about it at this moment in time. We spoke about it, and there's nothing to add anymore. We knew what was going to happen, and well, it's happening. So that's the Pogba update. Now let's move on to a Tuto Sport update on Surakov. And uh, they wrote some interesting thing. They said Juve is int- intensifying its efforts for Surakov. Juntili has a keen interest in him. Allegri is also becoming convinced that despite not being an experienced player, he could provide assistance without disrupting the team's balance. Surakov comes with a re- relatively high price tag of around 25, 25 million euros. Juve may need to make a sale first. Junior remains a primary candidate for the Jan- January transfer window. I'll tell... I'll tell Tottenham's interest seem to have cooled down in recent days. I don't really believe that last part, to be honest. I believe the part where we're trying to sell uh, Junior, I think that's very obvious now. Uh, the Surukov one, if Shakhtar, like Shakhtar could potentially make it to the next round in the Champions League. They're very well positioned for that, in my opinion. I'm not sure they're going to sell. And if you see or saw what they did with Mudrik, they will keep on, to hold on to the player. And one rich, stupid Premier League club will come in and outbid us. I think that's what's going to happen. You know, look at Mudrik. I don't know what they, they paid. 100 million, close to that. He's w- worth, I don't know, 25% of that. Absolutely, like, speed. And other than that, terrible player. Like, <laughs> nothing about him. You know, it's just football without thinking, you know. And it's it's a train wreck at times. Um, 
I think that's going to happen with Surikov. I think a Premier League team will come up, come in and outbid us. I think that's what the situation is. Even if we make a bid now, I don't think Ta- Tottenham, I don't think Shakhtar is going to accept because, like I said, they could potentially make it to the next round in Champions League. And they know if we keep hold on him, he's not, he's, he's not going to play worse. It's just going to be, I think, better on a big stage. And the offers will come in even better next summer. Also, Ukraine can still make it to the Euros, I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure they can still make it to the Euros uh, via the play- playoffs. He can be, uh, you know, playing fantastically at the Euros. And that will drive their, his price up. It's not going to come down. And Shakhtar know that. So, I don't... I don't know. It's one of those links where I'm like, I think it's a bit too late. <laughs> I think I like the type of news, the way it's been uh, put out there. And if you read between the lines, I'm just not having a good feeling on this one. I think it's just we're in for him or we like him. But I think just based on the news, we kind of accepted that it's not going to happen. So that's that part. And now the funny part, the funny news on uh, the Napoli thing. And I Actually, we shouldn't be discussing it, but I will bring it up because I thought it was funny. Uh, it was from Corriere dello Sport saying, Juntili has inquired about Anguissa's av- availability to leave Napoli, but the club has emphasized the 50, 40, 45 million release clause for clubs out of Italy, foreign clubs, a figure not far from what they could, would ask from Juve. This was, the <laughs> this was the easiest news you could put out there ahead of a Napoli game. A Juve Napoli game. This is absolutely not going to happen. I'm pretty sure Juntoli didn't ask for information uh, or Nap- Napoli's availability. He was there a couple of months ago. He <laughs> knows what the jizz is. Like this was when I read it, I was like, "Oh boy, this one, <laughs> this one is for um, this one is for the record books." You know, one to look back for at and say, "Wow, this was like." top Italian journalism ahead of a Napoli game, boom, this news, and it makes absolutely no sense <laughs> for any, like for, for anyone at this moment in time, you know, uh, one, we don't have the money, two, they're not going to sell to us, and three, why would he join us, like at this moment, in time? it makes absolutely no sense, it's not going to happen, I, I just thought it was funny, ahead of a Napoli game, I thought, well played, you know, that's, <laughs> that's fair journalism, fair Italian journalism, but yeah, uh, just quick news. Then Mirko Di Natale, update on Phillips. A big update, actually, in my opinion. He said, the Phillips situation is almost the same as a few weeks ago when Newcastle still in the lead. Tottenham interested too. The player would like to stay in the Premier League also to be more visible to Southgate for the Euros. Um, I've always said the same thing. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think we should be buying Phillips. Not because he's a bad player, but just because it's not going to change what we already have. Like It's not going to make a change that we are to something we're missing in this team, you know, yes, backup, Locatelli and whatever and all those things, we need somebody to probably replace somebody in that starting lineup. I mean, Kenny's playing midfield. For all the hard, for all the hard work, the quality is just still below below par. Like, it's not good enough if you compare it with Inter, and that's what we should be aiming for at this moment in time. It's actually far apart, in my opinion, uh, on a technical level. Phillips... I, I don't think it's going to move the needle. If we had a stacked squad and we're looking for rotation players or like players to actually play a good portion of minutes, then fine. But I don't think we're in that situation. I think we need to replace starters. We have in our first team already. I think we need to upgrade the quality of the starters in that first team. And and somebody, maybe some do not want to have that conversation, but I think that needs to be ha- happening all over the pitch before we actually start looking at squad players. So, um, and again, I can be completely wrong and they're not thinking about squad players and they think Phillips can come in and start in that midfield and I'm like, fine, but I don't want to see a midfield with Locatelli, Phillips and Rabiot. I don't think anyone wants to see that. So, uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. Talking about Rabiot, his contract situation, according to Gazette of the Sport, is moving at a good pace, saying he's inclined towards renewing his contract for another year at the same turn. So the only obstacle is not, you know, uh, not qualifying for the Champions League, but that will be an absolute disaster at this point if you don't make it. Um, if you want to keep Rabio, then yes, do a one-year deal at this point because I don't trust uh, handing it, handing him out a long-term deal. Um, I still think he's overpaid eight million euros a season. I don't like when I look at Rabio and whatever. Like even last season, he's not an eight million euro player. 
he's not. And you can say Vlaovic is the same. And I would agree. I would 100% agree, you know. And I think that's an issue in my opinion because if you try to sign players, they're looking at it and they're like, this guy is on 8 million euros. Agents will do that. They will do that. Chiesa's agent is doing that. He's saying Vlaovic on seven. We want that. Or it's going to be one-year extension. That's also some of the news today, which I'm not going to discuss. But I don't... I st- like, one year, fine, but it's it's overpaying. Like, it's absolutely overpaying for a player ra- like Rabiot. 8 million euros, in my opinion, it's crazy. But if you want to keep him, the one-year thing is the way to go, in my opinion. But that's the daily news for today. I'll be back with a match preview, match reaction, ratings, and whatever, all coming up in the next couple of days. So stay tuned for that. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll see you guys tomorrow post-game, hopefully with some... Uh, I know, good vibes. Thanks for watching. See you. Ciao.